you very much for joining me. I'm just getting three cards together for you. Today's reading is going to be what's blocking this relationship um, from reuni reuniting, not reigniting, maybe both. Um, so if it's more like a no contact situation, you know, what's going on and how can you possibly um, get over the hump? Three, num three cards you've got. Number one is Pluto. Number two is Chiron. And number three is Sagittarius. So if any of those mean anything to you, you may want, may want to choose that one. Okay, there you go. To be honest, I don't really know yet. And my thoughts are, I think it's you that could be um, possibly um, getting in the way of the next steps. And to me, the words are, I would guess from this, are a tender heart that feels that it needs to follow a certain protocol or a certain sort of what's acceptable to do next type of feeling here. And you're not normally like that. I think this relationship possibly puts you into a situation where you you become unhinged not in that way sort of like the shining and stabbing but um you you become not yourself you ask questions when you normally would um react spontaneously to situations and people um you second guess yourself i think in this relationship your person's coming across as saturn and strength to me that feels like a ceo type of feeling the saturn card will give a um a feeling of um being quite centered being quite grounded being quite practical having aims and being able to get there the strength card there adds a bit of warmth but still has that feeling of um, being ambitious and being able to wait for this rule over people. I don't mean that in the way that it came out. It's more a case of they would probably enjoy, don't take this the wrong way either, having people underneath them. So your person could be a boss. If not, it's the energy there that lights things just so and then the centre. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be negative. It's just the way that pe different people are. It's structure and growth, warmth, growth together. You're coming across over here as the four of air and psyche. So that has got a feeling that you're out of kilter with your normal self to me. The four of air is restricted or pulled back or resting. Psyche is thinking and trying to think so much or too much to try and understand the pattern, the situation, where the other person's coming from, what would their reaction be? And you've got the magician in the center. That isn't normally your blockage. You're not. You're normally somebody who is um, confident with regards to how you get things out of life, and you've 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 missed a not missed a trick, but your footing slipped a little bit. I think. Now, with this being a non-contact situation, probably I think it is very probable because you've got the death card here you've got the holding on to the pentacles card here which is normally like shut off in some way and the five of sorry the five of wands which is contentious i guess and the star card here is still hope in this one there's a still a feeling that probably from overthinking that you know there's not really that much wrong with the relationship it's just life circumstances, situations have caused you probably to pulled apart is what I've got a feeling here. Um, and you may be wondering whether your person needs you or wants you or whether they're just content getting on with what I guess is conquering the world, <laughs> just getting on with life. Um, and it's made you oversensitive. You've met somebody, you both like each other. And then something just hasn't happened. The blockage isn't in through lack of attraction. It doesn't feel like a big blockage here um, with regards to life circumstances, something big tripping you up. It, I think it's you that's tripping this up. Um, maybe to do with, because you're both very different personalities maybe. 
because um, the Page of Cups, and it's the Magician card here, would be Sweet Offers. And this is the blockage, like Sweet Offers, Kindness, Emotional, Starting Off, um, Gentleness, Feelings Towards Each Other, the Ability to Get Them Started. And then the higher front there is like, you feel like you've got to do it in a certain way. And you, with these like pullback overthinking cards, you have overthought it and it's not coming across natural inside you. So you're probably wondering, well, if I picked up the phone and said, should we meet again? It would squeak, <laughs> it would come out of your mouth in a very sort of high pitched way. You know, it doesn't feel natural. I'd like to say I don't know what I'm talking about there, but I think I do every day. The Ten of Swords here moving forward in the Ten of Cups. This to me, two tens like an ending. The Ten of Swords at the end of the situation, the Ten of Cups is like an accumulation of emotions, but there's a feeling here, you're looking over this way with regards to trying again to see where everything's, what happened, you know, why on earth did you split up? And it doesn't, as I said before, doesn't feel like something went terribly wrong, but work has to be done with regards to you feeling slightly ostracized or pulled out of the situation and thinking too much. This is a case of you're probably very gentle or very kind or very considerate person um, who in everyday life is apart from when emotions are involved you just are you've got that little bit of oomph about you that you're very good at do you know it makes me feel like you're the person who instigates um, connections you're very good at introducing yourself you're the first person to put your hand out you're very good if somebody new is in a situation or come into your village or your workplace you probably would go up and you know get it all moving but with this person you've changed your personality a little bit and so you're doing it more from from what you think you're supposed to be doing this has a feeling here with the hierophant card um of and, and these cards here and these cards here of somebody who i know very well who's recently divorced very cancerian very sweet very kind um incredibly bright <laughs> um but when he got divorced he read every book on women and women at certain ages <laughs> why they made they made to my all might go off the boil um and it was almost like can he can you all but he, He'd almost looked too deeply into it trying to understand it, the fact that he'd lost his common sense. He just, you know, he could have probably summed up the relationship in a couple of sentences, what actually went wrong there. Um, but he, he just, it's like, overthought it. So, the blockage in this has got a feeling of lack of spontaneity, you forgetting who you are in the situation, um, nothing particularly wrong between the pair of you. The blockage has got nothing to do with, I guess, um, bad blood between the pair of you. They're coming across as one of those type of persons who are busy being bossy. Um, you're coming across as trying to overthink it, trying to understand it, which is also part and parcel of becoming more of yourself as well. But it can flip over a little bit into um, becoming... <sighs> Potent. I can't think of the word there. That is not the right word. But you forget how to move forward. You become a shell of yourself, and that is dramatic. But you forget what attracted this person to you in the first place. And that, to me, must have something to do with you just being yourself. Let me just put another card out here. Or two. Oh my lord. Okay, advice the fool card. I don't need another card with that one. It's just be, just do. I have a Sagittarius friend who uh, always said to me, and I met a guy when I was traveling once, and he said it to me, and it was a very profound moment. And I was wondering whether to go into. Um, we were in Italy and I met him in Lake Como and he was a he was quite attractive, big ginger guy, a big rugby player. And we were hanging around together. And is it Como? 
yeah, not Como, Como, is that Perry Como? Um, and I was faffing about whether to go into a hotel to see if I could use their toilet. And he's looking at me as if I'm mad. And he said, you're just thinking too much. Just go and do it. This is the same with you. It's like there isn't that much blocking this relationship apart from your own thoughts because you're probably thinking too much because you are. It's made it's put out the tender feelings in you. So you're second guessing yourself. You've just got to act. This person probably would be uh, very open to more contact. And not think too much, not take it seriously. This person wouldn't. This person is not coming from a very emotional viewpoint. They're coming from a viewpoint of, okay, if I can fit this in my timetable, it sounds like fun. That's it. You're coming from, oh my God, did they sense that I was desperate? Or do they think I'm really attracted to them when I just like them? Um, this person's like, okay, if it fits in, I'll do it. So I don't feel there's a major problem with this connection. It just feels like it's been, it stopped for no particular reason. Time, running away, and you need to get back to your old self and let them see you shine is what i would say here so get back here um the four card is a great card to have next to the hierophant and those questions of you know the fool and the magician there's something about you that's a little bit different this person is a little touch of inside themselves this person's busy with head down doing things and being sensible and being you know thinking that they're good at it You've got what I guess is an edge here that you've um, that is probably very amusing, very funny, um, and very lively, and a little spark inside you that needs to be seen, um, and you need to be able to play with that in this relationship, and that's what's blocking it is because you've put it aside in order to be able to receive love, maybe. Okay, pile number one. I'm going to leave that there. Good luck. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Okay, pile number two. What's blocking this relationship if it is no contact? Um, there's a feeling here of competition in this one. There's a feeling here of egos possibly. There's a fire in this between the pair of you. They're coming across as a daughter of fire and you're coming across as Sagittarius but with five of water next to you. Um, there's a feeling here of the emperor the king of pentacles the queen of of wands that's like people in a business meeting and the other one's trying to get heard it feels as if one's trying to get heard through looking like they're trying to keep their job and that they know what they're talking about the other one's trying to get heard because the queen of wands would be because they've got an opinion and it needs to be heard they need it to equal the emperor card here is like push 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 the ace of pentacles it got started probably quite passionately um two strong personalities is what i'm thinking here the central power which is the most important with regards to no contact on what's happening the five of swords and an even feeling of one possibly getting one upon the other you know whether it was a it doesn't have to be an argument around a board table but it could be one didn't turn up or one was late and the other one saw it as a slight or an insult or the other one didn't phone or it may be an even in some way and seen as that and maybe there's somebody's pulled back um probably wondering whether the other one feels the same and you've got an ending here and the five of swords again is just basically doubling down on that feeling of inequality uh, amongst two people who may have strong healthy egos as we all have most of us you know got strong egos because that's how we stop ourselves from drowning in this life but yeah we hopefully we can step aside from them sometimes um the six of pentacles actually that's wrong we probably should step aside from our egos a lot more than we do anyway six of pentacles here you got pentacles card pentacles could be a work situation you got pentacles all over this with some feeling of loss still trying to you could have worked with this person um, 
but there's still that feeling here because you've got the five of swords here being question of inequality there and one feeling like the other one's um doing better than the other and i don't mean like I mean, it could be um since you've been separated one seems happier and the other one's still got the other one on their mind you're wondering whether they're what they're up to and whether they're happy i think you're not normally like this you're normally very happy go lucky very um optimistic and I think this person's put you into a bit of a quandary with regards to a bit like pile number one, not really recognising why on earth you're feeling like this. Your person is um, less thoughtful than you and carries on moving in relationships. And I think you are wondering whether you fit into their life you still fit into their life. There is a strong feeling of inequality, maybe to do with attachment or emotions. You may be questioning whether that the time you've spent together meant anything to them with these six of pentacles here and the seven of pentacles here. And since you've been separate, you know, is there anything that you've still got that's going between each other? Because there's a feeling here, maybe you're quite independent anyway. And I think you might actually not be very happy with yourself that you just can't keep moving forward with this with yourself as in like why can't you forget them if there is no contact here why can't you move on because you're very independent very very strong-minded and it annoys you i think here because the chiron here has got something to do with the distance maybe with the chiron on the sagittarius here being part and parcel of you and then we talk about ego over here of um, feeling holding yourself regardless of what's happening outside. So this one may be where this rub is in this this um, connection here because it gives you time to realise that, you know, as long as you're doing your best, the other person is <laughs> not irrelevant. As long as you're doing your best, that's all you can do. So, okay, let me look at this fresh again. So the blockage in this relationship has got a feeling of um, distance, um, inequality, past hurts, maybe to do with, maybe not to do in this relationship, maybe to do with um, feeling that you're not unseen, and your person tends to just carry on with things anyway in life. And it started off well between the pair of you, two strong personalities. You feel that this person should have more interest in you. And it's making you feel, and it shouldn't be, but it does because that's how we live um, or how we hurt. Chiron is making you feel a slightly unseen a little bit. And you're waiting for it to feel equal. Hold on. Okay. I'm thinking, where do you go with this now? You know, to give me more of an inkling of what the actual blockage is. And you've got this fight going on to me. It feels like a fight between the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands. It's not a fight. It's just basically, it's a rub and wondering where you both sit. Um, and whether they, you know, whether you, with this card here, it's ended and you both affronted. <laughs> It's probably the correct word for it with regards to where the situation has gone. So you're trying to gain what I guess is to feel like you're on equal ground again. So the, the kind of feeling here, it doesn't rub too much, doesn't hurt too much. And your advice is the King of Pentacles. Your advice is to act like this person here. Um, to not basically fire off or feel dramatic or to feel... Um, Oh, it's like emotions that are quick and dramatic. Yeah, it is dramatic, but it's not the word I'm looking for. It's, you shouldn't be feeling in this rushed 
or passionate with regards to being seen is the best way I can put that because that's not going to do you any favours. The King of Pentacles here is to be as strong as the other person is um, and to be confident in what you want out of this relationship um, and to be able to state that or how do King of Pentacles have relationships when there's like What's the blockage in here? It's ended and you feel that it, you don't know where you sit, whether it's an equal and you're feeling affronted by this and you're being asked to be the king of pentacles. You're, at, you're being asked to have a solid standing inside yourself, to not really be that bothered because you're playing a game with this person. I don't think you're actually literally playing a game, but it's like, it almost feels like a losing game. It feels like with the Sagittarius card here um, and the feeling left out that, oh my gosh, let's just say you get a Sagittarius <laughs> and everybody's going out on a night out and they've not been called. You have never seen anything as sad in your life as a Sagittarius who isn't included in a group night out. It is painful to see. It is, really is sad. And there's a feeling here, you know, if you have that feeling there's something that you want and you want to play, that childlike, fiery, fun quality inside you wants to play. But this person here isn't playing all the time. They have it in them, you've identified with it. But the Neptune card there is like, it's a little bit sloppy. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. You're underneath this feeling that's slightly unequal and you're being asked to deal with this in a King of Pentacles way is to meet them as that well to meet them with self confidence. Whether you see them, whether you don't, whether they compliment you, whether they wink at you, whether they come and talk to you, whether they pick the phone up, whether they call round, don't let it change you. Don't let it basically um, unbalance you with this card here. Allow this relationship to develop slowly. Um, oh, my battery's about to go. Stay with me. Okay, I'm back. I was just saying, allow this relationship to develop slowly because it feels like you could be the, um, in your terms of um, no contact, you could be the winner. You could get what you want in this, but it's like, don't do something you'd regret in the meantime. Just take it slowly and it is play that long game here. And sometimes, you know, you I talk to kids sometimes when their friends have been mean. I'm not saying this person's been mean to because I don't feel they have. But their friends have been mean to them. Um, and I say, just sit back on it. You know, just wait and see um, what happens. And most of the time the situation sorts itself out. As in, if you keep yourself stable... You'll get what you deserve in the end. Yeah. Yes, I think it is with this one. But there's the, the kind of one here as well, um, under your four of water, which looks, you know, hurt and it's got hurt and heal here, and you've got the four of water, which is giving you time out of this situation to find out your inner strengths. You know, when you had to tell when you can't get into a group situation and you want to cry, it makes you realise, you know, what you're is it what, not what you're made of it's something to do with metal isn't it the inner metal yeah so what do you think no sorry what is blocking this relationship what do I think is blocking this relationship um, you, this person isn't giving you what they should be giving you what you perceive they should be giving you you want it to be fun you want it to run you want it to be fiery and exciting and moving and it's not and your person has given you um, a false impression that's the way that they are like um, it isn't false that's the way they are like you can spot it in them but there's bits that you haven't seen that um, are a little bit more slippery and it feels then as if it's like a battle of egos a battle of who's going to call first or who feels the most who doesn't feel the most which is what happens in relationships a lot anyway even when you're married there's can, especially there's, there's there's always that like it can feel unequal at times um, and inequality is something I think that's bugging you here and what you do normally when you have that is you pull into yourself and you become more independent and that's the best thing to do because you need to get your stability before you start playing with this again because a five of swords five of swords um, and an ending here is it doesn't feel right to you I think you may perceive your person as um, 
I think through possibly a strong personality, I've had a little bit pushy or a little bit egotistical and you don't like it. But I think that may be exasperated, is that the word, by the fact that um, they're a little bit sort of wishy-washy with contact anyway and you haven't got them and it's insulting to you at the moment uh, because you want to play. And this like the Kaya one here is like stay back out of it for a bit and make sure you know who you are because this one is a slow burner where I think at the end of it you're going to be happy by not showing up and blowing up. I think that you're going to come out all right out of this. It's just allowing you to gather your troops inside yourself. I think this one giving you some time. Okay, pile number two. That's what I've got. I hope that helps. Um, I'm going to love you and leave you. Bye. Okay, pile number three, Sagittarius. Um, <clears throat> this has got a feeling of I think it's a bit like pan number one you're coming across as the five of air which is a difficult card it's normally a card of thinking that somebody's something's going on that's not I would say or somebody's done something that their intentions were bad and they probably weren't and I think um, you've got the psyche card here it's not because you're paranoid it's more a case of because you try to read into situations um, because you're interested either in the person either in the process or um, you're just interested in people anyway um, you have got card here for blockages as the devil card in this, this is central pie is the most important Got the devil and temperance and the king of pentacles. Your person could be a very masculine type of person. The devils, the Sagittarius feeling here, the king of pentacles. Um, I'm just going to go through these first before I start talking because they're coming across here as Mars and the daughter of water. There's some softness there. There's tenderness, there's kindness. But I think that they come across maybe as a little bit gruff or a little bit more getting on with it, not talking about it type of feeling. Busy. Um, to be a blockage, the devil to be a blockage with you maybe overthinking here as well and um, turning it into something that it may be not as in the problem there that possibly isn't really there. It just is this person just acts that way naturally anyway with the Mars card. Your Mars is a funny card. I was watching Formula One. Don't ask me why. Um, the other day and I'm just thinking there's so much Mars in people in Formula One. Oh, I was asking my husband, um, why is Formula One always associated with um, women just basically it's a bit like cheerleading isn't it just like hanging around over cars and looking lusty and that type of feeling and I'm thinking masculinity it's the Mars in the, the men who tend to do it tend to have a lot of Mars in their charts in all in prominent positions it's fast and it's racy um the devil card here so I wonder whether you're perceiving your person as being in control Like it's their move next. Let me keep going. The Eight of Swords here is mental. It's mental thoughts of connection and your person. You feel that your person holds the cards. So the blockage is that either you don't like the fact that they feel that they feel as if they hold the cards or they come across as a bit gruff and can't really be bothered, but they're actually quite soft as well. You can get that mixture sometimes, and I think that's quite difficult. And I've said in previous, read, previous readings, sorry, when you get somebody, I used to say Brad Pitt, I think, um, who's a mixture of masculinity, but he's got like a baby face when he was younger with like big lips. You don't know whether you're coming or going because one of you wants, half of you wants to protect and the other half of you, I don't know what, because I don't think like that, honestly. Oh, I do. The Daughter of Water here and the Mars card here is that this person could be, when you're with them, they're really easy to connect to and they're very gentle and they're very kind. But there's a gruffness in the way that they move through life. 
gruffness as in like they're just getting on with it and I'm doing what I want to do and I'm straight about it and it's causing you because you've got psyche here in the five of air don't mean to be insulting to you but I'm just reading the cards as they are it may not feel right the five of air is a difficult card where you think that somebody's got one up possibly and the psyche as I said earlier is overthinking it these two cards here can often think of trying to find a balance mentally and you've got this sort of masculine type of guy whenever I say that I always think of the godfather when the guy goes into the godfather at the very beginning and said I hope your child is a masculine child um because he's nervous and the connection to them you may actually like that type of person it doesn't have to be a man it could be just a woman who um who is forthright and confident and very easy to connect to but has that um, ability to say what they want and know where they sit and that type of person you may find that really attractive because there's a connection here between the pair of you so why no contact let me keep going um five of cups some loss to do with oh this is almost, because this is in the future, it's almost like a projection of something that's going to happen. You've got like, judgment is, to me is feels like an ending, like one life to the next almost. The three of swords down here is a, a hurt. And then you've got like five of cups, again, is loss. But this, why that? It's like smugness. Yeah, well, I knew that was going to happen. And I didn't want to say the word paranoid with that one, but they could have, please take the word paranoid out of that and think of projection. It's like projecting negative projection that you may have. The blockage in this could be your negative projection and it's not real. Because there may be something in this person's character that makes you feel slightly threatened in some way, um, which is something you've made up, maybe from childhood, maybe from another situation, doesn't mean that it's actually going to happen. And you're trying to find balance to do with the connection that is, you're drawn into this because it's like, oh, it's like trying to get over something that doesn't serve you. And the blockage in this is that you've chosen somebody who's going to, going to, going to, excuse me, going to do such a fantastic job of allowing you to see it. It's, yeah. There's anxiety to begin with. There's an internal, there's a mental journey that's quite painful to do with an attachment or attraction to somebody who may be quite masculine. Whether they're a woman, it doesn't really matter. It's somebody who's assertive, knows what they want in the world. You're very good at reading other people and there will come a time in your life, which may be now, where you need to be able to act in the outside world um, in a way that you can state who you are, as this person does. Maybe that's why the attraction. This person's attracted to you too, the daughter of water. There's a softness between you amongst the gruffness. There's a real strong feeling here of balancing out your need to um, to understand people, to read people. You're, everybody's got these quirks inside them that make them feel like they're slightly cut off from everybody else. It's what we do here. It's what we play really well. And, and these basically are here. You're not cut off from this person. You are um, attracted to them and projecting onto them things that aren't really there. And there's a kindness and a balance in this connection that's going to allow you to, let's just say, um, okay, let's just say you're in this relationship and this person is quite strong, quite, just gets on with it, nothing really going on, just, you know, a person who knows who they are, states who they are, and is in, in life, you know, the Sagittarius, they're in life, um, and you feel slightly out, so you're watching, and you're feeling, oh my gosh, you know, perhaps I said something wrong, or did something wrong, there's mental anxiety there, whatever it is, I don't really know, let's just say you get absolutely hammered one night, and you win the lottery that same night, so you're in that state of mind that is out of your normal state of mind, incredibly gleeful. How would you think about this person then in this situation and yourself, mainly yourself, in a totally different light? This with a judgment card is causing, you need to cause a whole flip in how you see this situation in yourself because we get so entrenched in who we are and our past experiences. And most of the time it's a load of crud. 
And this has got what is blocking this relationship. You're bringing your past experiences into this. You're bringing your projections, your expectations onto somebody that may come across as maybe um, not really needing anybody quite competent in the service. You become incredibly attracted to them because as part of, uh, there's always a Chiron feeling in here, a lesson. Um, and the Sagittarius, that feeling shut out, is the Sagittarius that turns the temperance down here, where it's balanced inside yourself that is probably going to bring the best out of this situation. So to sort of summarise this, um, what is blocking this relationship from moving forward? If there is such a thing as manifestation, <laughs> we, we read these things and we don't really know, do we? I test them out all the time. Um, and I would like to think that is true. In fact, I do like storyboards and um, we draw pictures and I've got a fantastic story about my daughter reading um, I Capture the Castle and where those two guys, two cousins move in next door. It's her favourite book. And we live in the middle of nowhere and next door two handsome young men moved in. And she was like, speaking to anybody a chicken a pheasant would be great and these two handsome cousins move in next door and um, so i think there is something in it but we don't know um i forgot what i was saying then what was i saying okay for you to manifest this i think has got a feeling of the temperance card and the sagittarius card down here oh what was it don't go sagittarius and temperance so you to know what you want, you to accept why you're attracted to this person, whether they're doing what they're doing is to not basically feel rebuffed and to keep moving with it anyway. It may be imagined slights is probably what I'm thinking here. And to unblock that, you've got to unblock yourself. That's where the manifestation bit came in. It's unblocking yourself and finding balance with your thoughts, the psychic bit inside yourself, the bit that understands everything that moves and being grounded and moving forward in a way that doesn't really give a, can I swear then, a humdinger to the psychic bit. You've got to have your feet in both worlds to be able to move forward with this. Feel the traction, do it anyway, don't overthink it. No, understand it, but don't overthink it. Make notes, your bedside table. You have dreams, make notes. You find some astrological connection, make notes. But don't live that. Don't expect this person to understand that. This person is very much just in it, just in the world. Um, it's balance here is how to unblock this one in yourself. This could be somebody that um, naturally attracts people towards them anyway because of a strength of pull of this type of person. Masculine, I'm thinking. Make your child be a masculine man, whatever it is. Okay, so pile number three before I go. What is blocking this relationship from re reuniting? I keep wanting to say igniting. Um, I think it's you to basically... Oh, I try not to swear. I give less of a care to just get on with it, to not overthink it, to be confident in yourself, to balance your thoughts and your feelings with everyday reality, to feel the connection, to feel the attraction, to not overthink and to let things go, let things flow. Um, because you are projecting, I would guess here, this is the pile that goes forward with a judgment card. It's like you're projecting another world onto this connection that hasn't even happened. And it's probably, you're probably using with these anxiety cards or these sort of internal conflict cards, the most negative parts of your brain to do that. It's like negative manifestation and just don't do it. Give it up. This pile is, it's, it's, um, it's interesting because we all do it. And I think we'd all do it uh, we, yeah, at certain times in our life and not other times. It's not your personality. It could be just the process or something that you're going through at the moment. It could be winter. It could be somebody just said something horrible about you last week. You know, that type of feeling. And it tends to, to get this person back into your life is to give less of a damn. Not, not caring for anybody, but just to keep acting and being yourself. 
you could do this really well, but don't do make sure it's positive. Imagine the best scenario. That drunken lottery um, thing is the way forward for you. What would you do if you were drunk and just won the lottery? How would you react? How would you act in this situation? So I'm going to leave that there, pile number um, three. I feel like I'm blaming the people having the readings for this, but there's, sometimes it goes internally and you may be able to turn this round if you look at it in a way that you care less and you just have more fun with it. Drunken lottery. Okay, thank you very much, pile number three. I'm going to go. Bye. <laughs>